Hello and welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you're joining us from. The event today is the International Graduate Student Q&A. So as incoming students, you are more than welcome to ask our current students uh, questions about their experience living in Canada, living in Hamilton, and their experience at you know, uh, McMaster University. Uh, we'll ask the panelists, the student panelists, to introduce your, themselves shortly. But how today's event will work is you are welcome to put in your questions in the Q&A box in Zoom. So this box should be located on the, either the top or bottom of this, your screen. And uh, I also encourage you to give a question that you also have that someone else already asked a thumbs up. This will help me uh, see the questions as priority. So the, the system will actually push it up in the queue. And uh, and more to, the more students who are interested in these questions, um, we will ask them uh, at an earlier time. I uh, forgot to introduce myself. My name is Yufei. I am the International Graduate Student Coordinator. I work at the School of Graduate Studies, and my job is to support all of our international graduate students. And uh, if you have any technical questions um, about the, the session in general, please feel free to contact me directly. And just a quick reminder that all of our student panelists are here to, uh, to talk about their experience and answer your questions according to their own experience at the university. Uh, they're not, they, they won't be able to give you any immigration advice or comment on you know, your program requirements because as you know, graduate studies is so diverse and their experience may not even be relevant to your current experience and their program's requirement might be very different from yours. So we will be prior prioritizing the questions about living in Canada, living in Hamilton, and being a student at McMaster. Okay, so let's get started. I will start with um, the people who are uh, in order uh, on my screen. So Zainab, could you please introduce yourself, including your program, your kind of cultural background, and something, just share something uh, that you do for fun. Okay, thank you, Yufei. Hello, guys. I'm Zainab. Uh, first of all, welcome to McMaster. <laughs> Second of all, I'm Zainab, a PhD student, third year PhD student in business, and I'm from Iran. Uh, what do I do for fun? Typically, I listen to music and I do hiking. Thank you, Zainab. And Parth? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the McMaster. Like, my name is Parth Patel, and I am from the India, from the Gujarat. And I am a master's student over here studying in systemic technology. I am in my second semester. And I will, if you guys want to come over here in Hamilton and you guys like to play cricket, then feel free to reach out to me. I am ready to play cricket with you guys. Thank you, Parth. Naharin? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Naharin Sultanani. I'm from Bangladesh. Uh, uh, currently, I'm doing PhD in the uh, Global Health Department. And uh, what I do for fun is uh, listening music and watch a lot of dramas, <laughs> different language dramas. That is one of the one of my hobby. And I love to learn new languages, new culture. So yeah, nice to meet you all. And welcome to MacMaster. Thank you, Nahari. And the benefit of learning new languages is suddenly a new new countries of drama is now available to you <laughs> yeah netflix yeah i i watch a lot of dramas and uh, learned a lot of languages perfect uh sina oh sorry i was muted hello everyone welcome to mac master my name is sina biazar i'm a second year civil engineering phd student uh, for fun, I guess I play ping pong and watch movies. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. And um, we'll get started with the questions. And it looks like, of course, the first question, the most popular question right now is about housing. And I am housing is really important to us in this I see now her here is not the perfect environment right now. So uh, just would you mind so far student panelists to share how you found housing and just kind of general tips for our incoming students to find a place to live? 
Parth, you're already unmuted, so I'll start with you. <laughs> oh, okay, no problem. So for the housing, like you can't find from the Facebook marketplace, Kijiji, like through your contacts in a Hamilton or Canada, or is you can directly also getting like the you are if you are currently available friends or relatives over here so you can directly get to them and they also going to help you but uh, but if nobody has anything any relative or friends over here then you can take a help from the kijiji and the kijiji is like gives a based platform and they have lots of options available but at the starting you think that there is a rent is too much high uh, but you have to like compromise regarding that and you have to get the housing from there because once you get it over here you can stabilize and once you get accommodation so then you can coming over here and explore yourself more then you can get better option so once you get that no then you can switch the housing too but the first thing is you get your first house in canada so don't look for the price i guess like is there is 50 100 dollars more just get your housing ready and just do for that yeah you can find it on like online like kgg marketplace and all that stuff yeah thank you parth uh Naharin? yeah i will also agree with part um but just i want to add something that just be aware of scanning because um in this time uh there was a lot of scanning that happened so just to be aware of this, like before um, transferring money or something else, like just like uh, check the thing and like double check if you need any help, maybe I can, I think you can just contact your graduate navigator or maybe any of your friend before signing any contract or money transfer, anything else, because this type of scamming case happen a lot, specifically from the Facebook groups. So just to be aware of that. I just want to add this one. Thank you. That's a really good point. Sina? Yeah, yeah I, uh, that oh. was Zena or Sina. Okay, Sina, you go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, go you ahead. go ahead. Okay. <laughs> besides, <laughs> besides what other students covered, I need to add something, a couple of things. The first one is I need to share one link here. There are a lot of companies here, like Effort Trust and Effort Rentals. They are, they have I don't know, every time lots of billings they have and students can go there and find at least fill one application for their house. And the other one is Airbnb. When they come here, uh, specifically at first month, they, they need to you know, look for lots of places, see other areas and everything. So they may go for a Airbnb for at least one month and then for, look for the places in the rental areas and in this neighborhood. Thank you, Zainab. Sina? Yeah, I think other folks covered like uh, almost everything, but just to add something, I think, uh, what uh, other students, what these students that are going to come here should know is that this process, finding a suitable accommodation is actually a very tedious and long process. So just, uh, you should you should con uh, continuously check uh, websites like Facebook, like KGG, like uh, Effort Rentals, uh, any companies, any large companies that gives, uh, you know, uh, that gets in the middle of, you know, landlords and the, uh, uh, tenants, you need to uh, check them continuously. You need to ask and uh, just stay on there. Just keep uh, trying. You would find somewhere suitable. Don't worry. I just want to add something that, like, if you are like a group of two to three or four, like, then you can search that, like, apartments in Hamilton. So you can directly get like your own apartment and is going to be cheaper for you and you all get accommodation so you can also go to the that way and i would like to also add like that if regarding the scams like one of my friend who is coming over in this september he just contacted me and he just said me his incident like the guy who just want that deposit first nothing like that he just uploaded the photos of the house and he just want to say that First, you send me deposit, then after I will send you my contact number or anything else. So don't do that thing. Just go for it, confirm for that, for that. Then after you just 
uh, send your money because there is nothing is going to be work if if you are sending money you cannot even contact them back again the, your money is going to be totally lost yeah so be aware of that too yeah thank you for the tip and thank you for uh everyone for sharing your resources in the chat also i'm sure the students really appreciate it uh does anyone have anything else to add regarding housing Perfect. So we'll move on to the next question. So the next question is about kind of arriving uh, at the airport. This is actually a kind of two-parter question. The second part is about study permit process. Um, if you're not sure about how the study permit process works or you have not applied for a study permit already, I highly strongly encourage you to contact our immigration advisors directly. Their email is immigration at mcmaster.ca. But let's address the first part of the question um, with our students. Um, what happens when you arrive at the airport in Canada? Could you please just share some of your personal, well, your experience and what you know? Uh, we'll start with Naharun. Okay, I will go first. First of all, I directly didn't came to Hamilton. I went to Quebec and I stayed there for my uh, like friend's home. So it was different from other people. But there is a good news that MacMaster is uh, now having a program that the airport welcoming program. So those people who are coming new, I think you don't have to worry about it. There will be some students for you to welcome at the airport, Toronto Airport. I think it will be like Terminal 1 and 3 where the international uh, planes come. Uh, and actually I will, I will also join for that program. That will be from August 1st to September. And after that, I think ISENT is also having a program to welcome the people who are coming to Toronto and Hamilton. So for that, that's the like additional information. So yeah, those who are coming new in Hamilton, I think uh, you will get the guidance from this program. Thank you, Nahari, for mentioning the airport welcome program. So yes, if you're coming through the Toronto Pearson Airport um, during the month of August, you'll see our, some of our student volunteers there to help you answer your questions. But please note that um, it might be helpful. Uh, we're, I, I don't think the transportation will be provided. It'll still be up to you to kind of get uh, to get on your own transportation. Perfect. Uh, who wants to go next? Uh, Zainab? Oh, sorry, Zena, go ahead. Yes. Perf, you're next. <laughs> uh, I think everything is pretty clear in the airport. You need to go to the officer and it is perfect. Fine, I, I went to Quebec too, so I'm not sure about the Pearson. But in that um, airport, everything was clear. I went to the officer, showed all of the documents that he wanted. I think the passport, uh, my admission to McMaster, and that was it, I think. Not many documents. And I needed to pass them some documents regarding their COVID thing, some application and so on. It is not true for this situation right now. But after that, he gave me the study permit and told me that welcome to Canada. That was it. <laughs> Perfect. And Parv? Yeah. So I just want to share my experience. Like once you come over here in Canada, when you're landing from the plane, just coming out the plane, there is immigration, not the immigration, the security, like uh, standing over there, and he says, he just ask you the formal question, why you are coming over here, what you will do, and in which course you are. So don't worry about that. They are not going to cross check you, are not going to be sending back to the, your country. Be confident and just be frank and like share your perfect answer, not going to be, has, do not hesitate. They are just very friendly. Do not like the from scare from them. They like the sick process is totally smooth. And once you're going by step by step, you will receive your study permit as well on the airport. And one more thing is, please check your name, budget, and all of the detail in a study permit. Because if there is something missing out, then you just spending your one month to clear that out. So please be aware of that. Please check all the details in the study permit, every single thing, date, by your spelling, butter date, everything. Because you don't have a complete study permit, then you cannot pick at your SIN number. So there is a process that like you just going very smoothly and be confident. That's everything. You can get your smooth process done from there. 
Thank you. That's a really great tip. Um, yeah, because it's always a lot easier for you to fix something while you're in front of the border officer than to submit the paperwork again to get it done. Like it's possible to get things fixed later, but it just takes so much more time. Uh, Sina? Yeah, I think other guys pretty much covered it up. Just to add something, the, uh, the process of getting a study permit is not as uh, as intimidating as it is when you're you're not having that when you're back in your country so just don't worry about it the process is easy actually i went straightly the first time that i come to canada i went straightly to toronto the lesser b pearson airport the process was easy although the the airport is very huge the process and the the the, uh, the pathways that you need to follow the procedure is very straightforward and easy and there are people there going to guide you to it. So just to uh, mention something, these days, uh, the airport is very crowded. Uh, you might need to, you know, spend a couple of hours there. It is possible. So just uh, don't worry about it. The process is going to go forward easily, but uh, just be ready to like stay for a couple of hours in the airport. Thank you, Sina. And I see that Zainab shares uh, a, a lot of uh, Facebook groups for housing, which is very helpful. Like we will take any resource we can get. And Sina made a good point about, um, you know, Air, Toronto, Pier most of our students, uh, although 50% of our students uh, are student panelists, but in kind of in general, most of our students do arrive through Toronto Pearson Airport, and it's, it is a big airport, but it's also a very experienced airport. There's a lot of people, but there's they see international students almost on an hourly basis especially these few months because there's also a lot of universities around uh in ontario so for example you university of toronto mcmaster queens waterloo uh, western they all arrive through pearson because that's the biggest the, the one international airport and so they they have a streamlined process there may be a waiting time because there is gets it does get really busy but they know what they're doing and uh you're in good hands okay let's move on to the next question um so this is about teaching assistantship um what is it like to be a T ta teach to be a teaching assistant in canada at mcmaster um does it get difficult for international students so could you share some of your experience being a ta I will start with Sina. Yeah, the first time that you're going to be a TA, actually uh, the first time that you're going to be a TA in another language other than your native language is going to be, uh, you know, it is a lot of work. You might need to spend more than 130 hours that is uh, dedicated, that is assigned to each TA ship per term, but, uh, all in all, if you're uh, if you're okay with the course, the course itself, if you know and you have been, uh, you have taken this course before, it's not going to you know, you're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Even if you're not familiar with the course, but you are generally familiar with the area and the topic of the course. Uh, again, it might be a little bit difficult for the first couple of uh, times that you do it. If you're a PhD student, you might have uh, you might have to do it like eight times or sometimes four times, depending on your study. But the first time or the second time, you might spend a lot of time. After that, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Don't worry about it. Perfect. Does anyone else want to comment on the TA experience? Yeah, can I add one thing? Uh, the thing is that we have different responsibilities here in TA ship. You can do the grading, you can do the tutorials, do every, and even office hours. If you are not so confident about the, being a tutorial, be, being a, you know, teaching a course in the first semester, you may request and ask your supervisor or the uh, prof to give you the grading. If you're familiar with the course and you can do the grading, it, it would be a better option and choice for you to start with that one. And, uh, when you go for the further semesters, you can request for a tutorial sessions as, as well. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Pars, would you like to comment on the TA experience? Right. Yeah, so like I don't have any TA experience, uh, but I want to share something like for the TA, like TA is for the teaching assistant, like you are directly working with the professor. 
so if you have a background in that field like there is a, one subject in that you are a good mastery then you can apply for the ta position by making a resume cover letter by using the mosaic if the professor is interested in to get you to work with you then he might be contact you back so you will get the position for the ta uh, but for that you require extraordinary and that field not the extraordinary but you have some knowledge or background work over there because you are directly connecting with the students and professor so there is a responsibility for that too so you can if you have experience if you have knowledge then you can go for that thank you parth and thank you for sharing the documents in the chat uh sina uh, Naharin? yeah i wanna i think everyone has said pretty much all but uh i will say like uh, our experience and your experience might be a little bit different because uh when i came it, uh, that time was everything was like affected by covid so all was online so we ha i have all the online t experience but in person it might be a little bit different maybe you might have to do a, a little bit more work but um I think the professors, the graduate coordinators and other all the people are so helpful, even your students, you will learn a lot of things from your students that I did. I did last two semesters like I learned from them a lot, even though I didn't know about the subject that much, but I think we are just I feel like I'm not a TA I'm just a teacher like. Uh, like students like that them and then i learned from the professors professors have some meetings with us even in person if we face any problems like grading or like checking the assignments or things so i think uh, you don't have to worry about it even though you don't have any experience like prior experience just uh, yeah just come to hamilton safely that's the priority Perfect. Yeah, and that is our priority too. And I just want to add that for our new incoming students, usually there's training offered by our uh, McPherson Institute. So they are the kind of the area in McMaster that um, kind of focuses on teaching and research. And there will be paid training for um, students, new students with teaching assistant roles. So um, look, look forward to that. I believe more communications is coming out about that. Okay, so the next question we have is about, you know, connecting and making friends. So Sun asks, um, how do I get in touch with people and make friends who are also uh, incoming master's students because they currently don't really have contact friends or relatives uh, here? I will start with uh, Zena. Yeah, I was searching for our clubs, graduate clubs in McMaster. We have different clubs here and they can join it even right now that they are not in Hamilton in Canada. Other than that, you're coming in the, in the post COVID time. So don't worry about making new friends. There are lots of people who are in the campus. You come here, you see lots of people here and that's it. And uh, Sina? Yeah, almost all nationalities here have a club, have a different club, have a special club for those people. So don't worry, those guys would reach out to you. To you. And also to add something to what Zainab said, uh, I literally found that like about 20%, uh, the, 30% of my friends just by walking into McMaster campus. So don't worry, you would find plenty of friends. It's just uh, finding friends would uh lead a lot of it some a bit of a little bit of time so don't worry about these things just uh come here safely and start your work and by taking your courses by uh, being a ta and go to uh you know to campus search around you will find your friends that's a really good point because what, what we're missing during the pandemic was the fact that the ability to walk around and make friends and I heard other students mentioning, you know, playing games like Pokemon Go, like that will get you to walk around a lot and uh, and hopefully connect with other people who are doing the same, doing the same things. Uh, Naharan? 
Yeah, I think everyone has said everything, but I will say like uh, you can see the newsletters that is coming every every week, I guess, McMaster newsletter. So you can see a lot of events are including these uh, those type of letters, or maybe some sometimes like you can see uh, any community have some gatherings, so they prior sometimes like put some news. So you can just check that out. So in that case, you can get some uh, events where you can make friends and uh, here the graduate navigators is actually the program where you can make friends I made friends with my uh, navigator so yeah thank you Aaron. yeah the grad all four of our students here are grad navigators and as you can see they're wonderful and I hope uh, if you have signed up for a navigator program before last Wednesday you already got your navigator and I hope you're connected and if you signed up recently you'll get your uh, navigator match this um, on Friday hopefully and also I want to echo the please check uh, your emails for the newsletters with upcoming events uh, as you've attended all the webinars throughout the summer most of them as you've already experienced are quite just information based where we're sharing information but going forward we'll have uh, more events uh, in August and September that kind of focus on the community building and meeting other people. Zainab? Yeah I forgot to add one thing we have one program here model which is called model and in model lots of virtual and in-person gatherings and meetings are held every time so if they want they can even join these kind of gatherings even right now for making new friends before even coming to canada yeah i model. share this link in, in the chat box perfect yeah model is a really great resource and we're actually uh are planning an event with model coming up in august is about you know introducing to the services model has to offer so this is a really great event that you're invited to attend uh parth do you have anything to add yeah so for making friends like try to spend your time on campus when you're going to spend time on campus you will directly connecting with the people like the campus also have good facilities like a gym like sports building just go there play like you will get your friends and as well as when you are working part-time so you are working with that other students as well like part-time job you also get that part-time like connecting with the part-time students as well so don't worry about to making friends once you go through that so you will all making the friends so don't worry about that you will get you are good in making friends as well. That's a really great response, which kind of segues into our next job, uh, next um, question. Uh, so Parf, since you mentioned it first, we'll have you stay on the call. Um, do you have any tips on finding these part-time jobs? Or you're, you're also more than welcome to share your experience. Yeah, so for getting your part-time job, like Walmart has a great opportunity Walmart, Fortinos, No Frills. So you can go through their websites, also the Amazon warehouse. So those are the good opportunities, like the pay, like the pay is also good. And the work is also like not that much high, not that much low, like the equal level of work. So you can go through their websites. And one more thing is like Amazon warehouse in Hamilton, they are going to hiring the new people from that 25th of August. 25th of July. So you can see the website as well. You, if you are coming over in just the next uh, few weeks, so you will get to like, like submit your application, then you will directly get your part time job in warehouse. And there, like, there is a good opportunity. Like, you can get not the minimum pay, you can get $70 to $80 per hour. So that, that is a good opportunity. And if you are going to miss the August, if you are coming in September, like just go to that like every single store by walking so making your resume like what type of skills that you are do for them not your technical but you are doing working part-time so making resume according to that if you are going to submit a resume in subway so make resume according to that so like you can do that kind of work so you can get it by spending a few weeks maximum because there is a lots of opportunity but you have to keep patient and you have to spend time to finding them too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for all your advice. 
uh, does anyone else have uh, uh, experience kind of finding part-time jobs in Canada or want to uh, have some tips? Oh. Yeah, I didn't have any. I can't give you any tips. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, usually uh, if you're uh, kind of like a PhD uh, level student, your supervisor will be pulling you in and out and uh, into uh, projects and presentations and TA and RA. And really, there's not a lot of time for part time jobs. <laughs> I see a thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, move on to the next one. So the next few questions, I will um, kind of comment on them a bit because this may be different from student to student and from program to program. So the so uh, just kind of follow up questions about becoming TAs. Um, usually if be a teaching assistant or TA is in your offer, your program will arrange your TA ship for you and they will inform you of um, which courses you're going to be TAing with. Um, if it's not in your offer, um, sometimes you can apply for TAs if there are openings in your program. So the programs usually email their own students first. Of course, they prefer their own students to TA their own courses. And then, uh, and some of the postings will be posted on Mosaic, the jobs opportunities tab. So the, these are some of the ways that you can find TA opportunities. And uh, the next one is a very technical question about uh, conversion from Canadian units to European units. Again, um, please check with your, with with your program directly because the arrangements may be different from program to program from university to university. And these are some of the questions that, you know, as a staff member, I don't even know how to answer. So please check your program directly. And then the next question, of course, is a question that we get very often in these events, and it is for our students. Um, could you provide some guidance or thoughts about, you know, the clothing and stuff they should bring from their home country or they should bring with them when they arrive in Canada? And on the contrary, like, what should they not bring with them? Might as well comment on that as well. Uh, is anyone ready to go? <laughs> Naharan, you just smiled, so I'm going to pick on you. <laughs> okay, uh, the thing is, uh, I did not came from my country because I came, uh, I was doing masters to another country and from there I directly uh, fly from here uh, to here. So the fact is for the winter class and other stuff I already had because I also studying in a, in a uh, in South Korea, which is almost similar weather like Canada, but the people who are coming from a warm country, just like as I was from Bangladesh, so it's a very warm country and we are not wearing that much winter clothes there. So, and clothing is also different from Canada. So I will prefer you guys just uh, bring some warm clothes that you already have and you don't have to buy a lot of things because you can buy these things from Canada either Toronto or in the Hamilton, you can find a lot of uh, offers, sales, and also you can find good brands. So I think better just to bring uh, the essential thing and the food stuff. Uh, if you need some seasoning or maybe a masala, what you need or what you prefer to eat. So you just can bring those things. And also the medicine, the emergency medicine that you should bring. Uh, but for the uh, masala and other stuff, I can say also there, here is Canada, so you can find everything, although it might be a little bit expensive, but you can find it. So just bring um, a decent amount, not a lot, uh, too much, decent amount you can find here. Later you will, you will find everything in Hamilton. So uh, just bring the yeah, essential things. You don't have to bring a lot of things like, okay, I'm going to Canada, it's very cold, what I will wear, but uh, here you can find everything although a little bit expensive. Thank you, Naharin. Uh, Sina? I think uh, Naharin covered like almost everything that I wanted to say. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you're good for contact with some of the clothes or if you have, you know, uh, some food preferences, you know, some, uh, some things that you like to have here, you can bring it on. But uh, the thing is, even if you have, you haven't brought anything, literally anything. You can find anything that you want. 
in here in Hamilton or in the worst case you can find it in Toronto. So basically you can have everything here. Just don't worry about the things that you might not have the, uh, you know, the, uh, the volume, the capacity to bring with yourself in your luggages. So yeah, that's it. Thank you, uh, Parth. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Everything is covered, but I just want to add a few things. Like for the winter, mm -hmm. like you have to buy your winter clothes or winter jacket from here only. So do not bring from your country because sometime here go minus 18, minus 20. So if you are going to buy, if you are from the colder countries like from what, like as Canada, then it will be a good. But if you are not from that country, so do not buy and do not carry your winter clothes from there. Just buy it from here only uh, because they're, because they're, they're not working over here. Like you have to compulsorily buy it from here. So do not do overweight of your bag because already you have a limited weight to carry. So just be like, as Nairam said, just do, just put it the necessary things that you needed for two to three months. But rest of that, you can get everything over here. Like it's too ex little expensive. Once you are starting earning over here in Canada, then you can afford that. No worries about that. Thank you, Parth. And Zena? I think the others covered almost everything except for the memories. Bring with yourself all of your memories, which are valuable. So you, these cannot be found here. All the other things, the clothes, the dishes, everything, you can find it. But the memories, no. That's a really great point. There's really, you can't really buy personal <laughs> things here. And yeah, and it is everyone, I know that we didn't really specifically say anything about winter, but everyone really brought a, have like the agreement with if you're really from a country that doesn't get cold winters, uh, that country probably don't make clothes for winters that cold. And I want to highlight that when you get here in the summer, in August, in September, you're going to be fine. It's not cold yet. And you do have plenty of time to kind of shop for winter clothing. And uh, in a few upcoming events, uh, like the virtual cafes for international grads, we will have a session just to kind of talk about, you know, what to look out for in the winter, how to get ready for winter uh, as a group too. So uh, you're more than welcome to attend these events. But meanwhile, don't worry about, you know, your immediate winter needs because uh, it's not going to be winter when you come and you do have a lot of time to prepare for the Canadian winter. And by that, that time, you and get to know more people and talk to more students and um and things will be fine and yes when you get off the plane in uh, august and september it's not going to be cold so don't wear your jacket <laughs> okay uh Next question, and uh, and we touched on, you know, it, it's related to kind of bringing things versus buying things. Um, any tips on kind of buying good and uh, affordable laptops or like electronics in general? Like, so for example, uh, should we buy it from the university or there are some shops uh, that you would recommend in particular? Does anyone want to go first? Or if you bought a laptop in Canada, where'd you get it? And how did you find it? Say no? Yeah, uh, for myself, it doesn't work because I got my laptop from the department. They gave, gave it to us. But other than that, they, I think they can wait for the Black Friday sales. In that time, the, most of the electronic things get good sale. So and good discounts on that. Uh, if they can work with their own laptop during this time in December, I think in mid-December, they will start the like further sales will start and that time they can find good things with the affordable price. Thank you, Zena. Uh, Zena. Uh, I actually uh, brought my laptop from my home country. Uh, recently, I, I sold my laptop to one of my relatives and I bought a PC a system. Uh, similar to what Zainab said, I bought it like in the uh, one of the promotions. So I bought it like with 10%, 20% discount. Uh, yeah, I, I can't I, I can't say some very specific, but you can wait for you know the promotions, the uh, Black Friday or the Boxing Day, something similar to that. 
to that and uh yeah nothing comes to my mind specifically okay uh parth mm, yeah so yeah. You, if you are looking for electronic stuff like you can see from like the from the website as well like the based by like the based by provides like good offers and deals over there so you can see from anywhere but if you are looking for a new laptop then you can buy it from the canada only because you don't need to carry your converter or anything else and like you can also get a better deal like if you are going to buy things from the based by like one of my friend is buy from there so you he has get that uh, like the gift card there is not going to be getting from the online deals as well so if you are looking for that just search that and also you can buy the second hand from the marketplace but you need to like check that everything is going to be perfectly very well or not uh, but if you are looking for the new one i just advise you to buy it from the canada only and once you come here like you will get like like you will explore with your friends or colleagues over here then you will get to know from where i can do where i can buy so you will directly get to know like about that electronic stuff yeah. but if you want to see the prices and all that thing you can see that from the based by website or as well as some other shops are also available but i guess the based by gives the best deal if you want to buy that perfect thank you parth and Aaron? Oh, I think everyone has said, <laughs> and I don't have experience to buy in Canada, so I cannot help. No, that's fine. That's that's very helpful too, because it's possible for you to bring over your laptop yeah, or exactly. bring some other. Or uh, who knows? Maybe your department also have the funding for you to support for the uh, laptop or other stuff. So I think that it's better just you come first and then explore. I think that is the. Best. Yeah, that's a really good tip. Yeah. And in September, early September, August, another sale that might be going on is the back to school sale. So things I know Apple has kind of some kind of promotion, not a, not a great promotion, honestly, but just some kind of promotion. And uh, some electronic stores may also have it, but it's always more helpful for you to kind of look into what's available first if you're not in a rush. And the question mentioned uh, camp, uh, campus store. Um, really is not like comparing to else buying it from elsewhere uh, like an electronic store the campus store really is not like they don't have as much as many selections it's not cheaper so uh you don't have to prioritize the campus store that's what i'm gonna say so yes okay uh just looking at the chat uh sina thank you for sharing your experience And if you're looking at, uh, so just a tip in general, when you, if you're thinking of buying things, if you're looking at um, looking at prices, doing price comparison, uh, please feel free to go on uh, the Canadian versions of like the big kind of international companies like Dell, like, you know, Apple or like stores like, you know, Uniqlo or like this. Because it's because the prices are on on their websites, the Canadian sites are the same as in stores, and you can use it as a reference. And as well, um, going back to the questions about you know clothing and what to bring, uh, really, um, we know that you know the big names are what people talk about, but you really don't need the, the Canada goose. You don't need an Apple computer to to be successful or to stay warm. So. Um, yeah, so please don't feel pressured to kind of go with these big brands before you come here. Um, so the next question is tips on how to apply for PhD in McMaster after uh, master's. Uh, does anyone have kind of relevant experience on that if you've completed both master and PhD? I recognize this is kind of like a very specific situation. Okay. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have any very um, relevant tips, but if you're starting your uh, master's and master and you want to move on to a PhD, I think your supervisor and your grad administrator will be your best resources if you're not thinking of moving departments because they are the ones that's kind of overlooking the application processes and the administrative processes. And once after you start your master's, you can get to know some PhD students and ask for their tips as well. 
Okay. Um, so the next questions, question I have is, so everyone, just a reminder, please feel free to upload the questions that you like to, you like us to answer. This will really help us kind of prioritize uh, which questions that we're answering first. Um, so the next few questions, the two questions are relevant to prescription medication. Um, can you bring, can they, did you, if you have experience, do you think they can bring your regular prescription with them? And, uh, and do they need, so medical wise, so in general, do, would you recommend to get their kind of medical documents from their home country? Yeah, in general, I can I can answer for that because uh, recently I have searched for this for one of our friends. So you need to check the Health Canada and uh, the uh, relative sites that would uh, indicate that are uh, from the federal government and would uh, have the authorization to uh, generally note on these issues. But in general, uh, Health Canada uh, indicates that you can bring uh, basically any kind of medication that you need urgently up to 90 days for the uh, for the people that are coming to Canada for temporary residence or permanent residence for the visitors it's it can be go up to uh, 180 days although the regulations might change uh, from the time that they checked up until now so you need to check it by yourself uh, and there is a list of the, uh, there is actually two kinds of drugs that you can bring with yourself. There is one list that uh, is in general, you, you don't need prescription for that, but there is another list that you need prescriptions. And these uh, lists are, should be for, uh, uh, based on the list that is available for Canada, not your home country. So basically what I'm trying to say is that uh, you might not, don't, you might not need a prescription for a specific drug back in your home country, but you need, you might need a prescription for that specific drug in Canada. So just check for that. You can also check, uh, consult with your doctor. Some of the doctors uh, might have some idea about the drugs that you can bring with yourself or can. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Sina. And uh, I shared a few links in the uh, in the chat about the government, the most recent, well, the up to date government of Canada information. There's a few lists and things involved. So it really depends on the, the type of medication you're taking. And, um, and as a general advice, uh, I will also recommend for you to bring documentation with you, especially for medical reasons, because if you need to see a doctor here, it's always, always more helpful to have some kind of med um, medical records uh, from your home country, even if you need to get it translated, even if it's not translated, to explain your situation. Unless you yourself uh, are a medical professional, having these documents from your doctor would be really helpful. Does anyone else want to share kind of their experience with um, prescription medication and in general kind of uh, medical documents? No? Well, I think that's pretty much all. And the fact is, yeah, if you want to bring some general medicine, I think you don't have to worry about that much because here is a lot of like drug stores where you can find uh, so much good medicines uh, and it still is not that much expensive if I consider these things in Canadian standard. So um, I think that if you need any specific medicine that's like Sina already mentioned, just follow that uh, like, uh, um, like the requirements and then bring your medicine. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so we'll move on to the next question, but um, it looks like it's also about TA um, and is very kind of a specific situation. So the question is about if you have TA in your offer, would you be paid for any RA you do in your research lab? Um, so this I would check directly with your supervisor because even as a PhD student, uh, the kind of the the, the financial arrangements can be very different because you can you'll, you'll find out there's like the employment income from your TA there's also scholarships there are also maybe funding from your grant so every student is unique in this way but it also makes things complicated uh, I recommend checking directly with your supervisor or your department to get things sorted out if it's not clear in your um, offer letter uh, next question. I see Parthia. Uh, you you might 
want to jump on it is about uh, how do we need to present ourselves at our departments at McMaster? And like, I just want to write that you can directly contact to your department, like they send you that, like the, your convocation date or anything else, they are, they are guiding you very well. So you can directly reach out to them. But my, in my case, I am a late to join the Mac Master. I am a one, I just joined one week after the enrollment. My, my issue is the regarding my study permit. So you can directly ask to your department to get to know about that. Perfect, thank you, Parth. And, and of, of course, this question um, also really depends on which your department is and what your department requires. So, so please check with your department's uh, graduate administrators directly and just look out for their communication that they're sending out to uh, their new students because you're probably not the first or the only person wondering about these things and your, your department is aware and they will let you know all the information you need to get started. So back to the um, bringing electronics from another country. Um, usually I would, the, the question asked for um, what kind of converters and where we can buy them. Um, does anyone have any thoughts? There are actually two kinds of adapters. Uh, we have voltage adapter and we have outlet adapter. In general, the outlet adapters are called adapter. So uh, uh, it depends on your home country and the electronic device that you have currently uh, and if it is working in your home country. If, if uh, the standard, the voltage standard in your country is 120 or 110 in some cases, you're completely okay. You can bring your stuff, it's going to work. But if your standard, if your voltage standard in your home country is 120, it might not work for some cases and for others might work. It depends on the structure uh, of the electronic device that you have. Generally speaking, if uh, you can use your device without directly connecting it to the, uh, to, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, electricity, you can basically work with it here because it probably has a battery. If your device has a battery, it has an adapter it's inside itself and the adapter works with almost all of the uh, voltage standards all around the world. But it, if it needs to, it needs to uh, directly connect to the electricity when it's going to work. For example, for some food processors or like for some shavers or something like that, you might not work with it. You might not be able to work with it here. So just uh, in general, just uh, check the description of the device that you have and check whether you can work with this device. On the, on the standard of the voltage of equal to 110 to 120. That's a very comprehensive answer. Thank you. Uh, that's Just one thing to add. Yeah. Uh, but if, if the outlet, if your outlet is not something uh, similar to what we have in Canada, we can easily buy an outlet after you can basically find it anywhere here. Amazon has it, Walmart has it, basically anywhere that you go, you can have it. Even I guess you probably, uh, I'm sure that it, these outlets, it, these outlet adapters, which changes the outlet is available in your home country. You can buy it there, you can buy it here. Just don't worry about it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's a very, you know, a graduate student in engineering kind of answer, which is very comprehensive. Yes. Strangely, I'm a civil engineer, not, not an electrical engineer. <laughs> Yeah, I have a social sciences background, so I'm just going to say, well, get something that works, hopefully. Um, yeah, does anyone else have any additional thoughts about this? Oh, I think Sina already uh, made the answer very specifically. That's very good, actually. So many things I didn't know about. But I think, yeah, the, the thing is like the adapter you can find everywhere. Even you can find in Dolorama, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, and if you really are worrying, um, in Canada and the United States, we, we have the same things and, you know, the world centers around United States um, and um, and your home country probably have something that works for your local kind of needs uh, converting to North American and Canada, United States. So uh, hopefully that's not difficult to find, but I wouldn't be too worried about it. Okay, we are have two minutes left and... Um, and we 
have two questions, uh, but we might not be able to address the, the questions um, right now. So um, maybe as a final note, we'll just answer this last question about the cost of living per month in general. And you don't have to, of course, give out a number, but maybe just some general tips about uh, cost of living and just kind of your expenses as a student, as a grad student in Hamilton. Uh, start okay. with um, uh, I might go first, yeah. Yeah, Harin, yeah, because the fact is, that I think that's the universal question, and right now we are suffering for it after that with the calculation we did before we come and after we come here, so it's totally different. But uh, I will say, your um, uh, it depends on the offer letter that you will receive. And I believe the this year offer letter has made based on the the inflation or other stuff. So I think the offer or um, the money you will receive as a graduate student, it might not be a lot, but it will be enough for you to uh, live life in Hamilton. And uh, after you coming in Hamilton, if you feel okay, it's not adequate. We, I cannot manage you with these things. I think you can find some on-campus job, off-campus job, and also TARA. So I think somehow it will be manageable. So don't worry about it from your home country. I think first priority is coming in Hamilton safely. That's all for me. Thank you, Naharan. And Sina, you've shared some numbers in the chat. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to communicate by this so other guys can answer the question. Perfect. Uh, we'll go to Parth. Yeah, so it depends, majorly depends on your rent, your utilities, then after your groceries, like, like if your rent is around 400 to 500 and your groceries is going to be like 150 to 200. So there is going to be wind up everything around 700 to 800. So you can manage that stuff because you are doing part-time job as well. So there is, a, it depends on your rent and also the, as the Sina mentioned, your lifestyle, like what you want to do, what is your requirements. So it's totally depends on you. Thank you, Parth. And Zena? Yeah, I just need to add that the majority of their cost would be on their rent, their accommodation. Other than that, the groceries and other things wouldn't be so big trouble for them. The, the majority of it is on their rent and they need to find a good house for decreasing their, their monthly cost. Perfect. And uh, Sina, do you have anything to wrap up? No, I think other guys covered it up. So yeah. perfect. And yeah, as I agree, accommodation is the big one, and uh, and beyond that, it really depends on a lot of your kind of personal lifestyle and your preferences. Like for example, what may be acceptable for you may be different than someone else. I have a full time job, but I'm living in a basement apartment I'm pretty happy with it right now but when I tell students this sometimes they're like holy crap um, so it really our conception of what's okay for us or what we're happy with can be a bit different well this is it for today thank you so much to our four student panelists for sharing your experiences we really appreciate that um especially all the tips and all the resources you're sharing in the chat. This is really only kind of current students can, can you know, share and experience and I hope that our attendees got um, really helpful information from our student. And uh, please uh, feel free to stay connected, attend our future events. And uh, like Naharin said, we hope you come safe and sound. We're happy and we're eager to welcome you. And I hope we'll meet you sometime on campus in September. Have a great rest of your day, rest of your evening, everyone. And uh, until next time, bye. Yeah, thank you very much, all of you.